Hi everybody, this is Brandon with Fold Up Games. Welcome! Uh, in this video, I am going to attempt to do something crazy, and that's to give you a really quick overview of how to get started in Unity for people who are used to Game Maker. If you're into Game Maker and you've been kicking around getting into Unity, this is what I've figured out so far. I am not an expert in Unity. I am a student. Uh, I had kind of a bit of a false start, I think, once or twice trying to get to the point that I've gotten to so far, so I wanted to show you uh, where I got waylaid, what I didn't know, and what I really wish I knew getting into this, and to show you what I figured out at this point, and maybe kind of smooth the path out for you. So uh, with that in mind, let's go ahead and get started. First up, I want to tell you that Unity is free to get started, which is really great. You can go download it right now. Uh, you can also make 2D or 3D games in it right out the bat. You can make mostly 2D games over in Game Maker. I know you have 3D capabilities, but it really is more of a... It's better suited for 2D games, I think we know. Um, Unity is really happy to jump into to 3D right off the bat, and you can see my little 3D world that I was throwing together here in Unity. Uh, so there's a, there's a lot to recommend Unity, and being free until you start making some cash in Unity. Uh, I think that's really, really great because you can get started, get your feet wet, and you can even make a little money uh, before you even have to pay anything. So, very cool. First of all, the thing that I did not understand and that was really, really important and it threw me in all the tutorials until I got my head around this is that Unity is kind of an assembly area. There's a lot you can do right here and a lot of changes you can make and a lot of tweaks that you can make to the stuff that you've brought in here, but Really, if you if you think about this as kind of a central assembly area, is going to make a lot more sense. The reason I'm saying that is because over in Game Maker, what you're going to do is create your code, create sprites, create everything right there. But in Unity, you're going to need to use some third-party uh, assets. Like you can code here in Unity's Mono Develop, but usually what people do is they install Visual Studio from Microsoft. Let me go jump over and show you that. Uh, they install Visual Studio to write code. So this code is like standalone, and then it's a piece that is brought over into Unity as well. You can actually see right here, here's a piece of code sitting there, my player controller that's connected to my player. Uh, here's material for water that I threw over there. You know, that's another thing that's assembled. Here's a tree that I designed in Blender and brought in, uh, you know, and on, on all this different stuff. Uh, so aside from all the objects and all the things that you import, the code itself is actually worked on in an outside program. So that's that's why I say that Unity really feels like an assembly area, at least for, for anybody who's coming to this program from Game Maker, you're going to maybe feel like, why did this tutorial just start? And then they like left Unity and never came back to it for the rest of the tutorial. Um, usually what they're trying to do is teach you C Sharp instead of Unity. So if you're here in the software and you're like, okay, what's what? What are all these panels? And why am I learning C Sharp instead? Why am I over here in Visual Studio? Well, that's, that's probably a big hang up. You really are going to need to learn uh, C Sharp eventually to get going in Unity and to make any kind of progress. There is an asset store for Unity and you can download things and just bring them in. But I don't think you're going to be all that successful unless you have the ability to write and understand your own code or at a very minimum open up something that that you downloaded and understood what they were doing uh, so anyway um, I, I feel like you really need a formal class for this software just trying to get a few tutorials here and there on, on YouTube or whatever else they're just so scattered and it's just varying quality I wound up getting midway through a course that I was into in Udemy uh, which was good but it kind of got complicated and they they lost me eventually so I'm switched over I started messing around with Skillshare to see if I could figure out anything there um, but I, I don't think just getting in here and just tooling around is going to make you all that successful. You're going to need some formal education and training. There are built-in classes, um, tutorials on Unity as well through the, the Unity Hub. This is the main thing that you're going to download and work from is the Unity Hub. This is your central command zone where you're going to create new projects like a new, you know, new which version of it, all the, all the versions that you're using there's lots of installs like I've got two different installs of Unity so to make sure I've got the latest one some of my projects are in you know different versions of it and different updates so and that's one thing to be aware of like in Game Maker you just update 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 all the time so Unity you might be having projects that are running in a few different versions you know here's one in 3.9 and here's one in 3.7 
Uh, but anyway, uh, they do have the the ability to go through tutorials right here, and these are pretty cool. Like this FPS mini game, micro game, shows you all the basics of how to move around, some things like that. So these are these are pretty neat, uh, and I would recommend taking a look at that. So you're not completely left with nothing, but hopefully this tutorial will kind of at least get your feet wet and give you an overview of what you're getting into. Um, if you're into drag and drop in Game Maker right now and you don't even write, you know, GML code, I think you're going to have an uphill battle and I don't know that I'd recommend even getting into this. All right, that may sound like uh, a big negative, but if you're not into at least GML, I, I think this is going to be too hard for you to be quite honest. That's my takeaway. Another thing is that in GML, it, it kind of allows you to get away with a lot of bad habits in coding is what I've learned. Uh, for example, if you see up here at the top of my code, I have private float, uh, move speed. The way you write variables in GameMaker is going to be like, you know, ammo equals 10. You know, that look like at that. See, Visual Studio is going to drive me crazy. It's always trying to correct me. That's one thing that's also driving me up a wall. Visual Studio is a little too helpful. Ammo equals 10. Okay, that doesn't mean anything. That doesn't mean anything. That is a bad habit that I think we get away with in GameMaker because what happens behind the scene when you start compiling code is that GameMaker goes and figures it out and writes it up correctly, which would be, what kind of variable is this? Well, this would be an integer, you know, integer ammo equals 10, and then we have to end it up with a semicolon to write it correctly. All right, that's the right way to write code, and, you know, Game Maker's always letting us get away with murder, <laughs> I think. Uh, and I think it winds up making code that's a lot more kind of convoluted and complicated behind the scenes and makes your games run slower. Whereas over here, you're going to have to learn some good habits and correct coding habits and do it the way that uh, C Sharp expects you to. So it's a little less holding your hand. Uh, but some of the stuff that you you might be familiar with, you can probably recognize You know the way I've done all these little, little uh, squiggly brackets all through here, these squiggly braces. If input get a key code W, right? Squiggly brace, do this. Transform my position. All right, this is stuff that you're probably going to recognize already uh, because it's very similar to those kind of things. That logic that you've been learning in the way that you write code totally, totally, totally will carry over here. Um, you've also got a lot of concepts like the input get key. You, you're going to recognize that kind of thing already. You know how to write this sort of thing because it's already baked into GML. You know how it is, how you can't write just V speed and H speed and use it for whatever variable you want to because V speed and H speed are already built in to Game Maker. They're reserved to Game Maker. Same thing here. You can get Visual Studio and when you get Visual Studio you can intentionally get all the Unity packages. So Visual Studio is connected to Unity and they're talking to each other. But remember, like I said at the beginning, they really are separate programs. So every time you write code here and save it, it's going to go and synchronize back up over into Unity, okay? All right, so let's take a look over here and we'll uh, take a look at this interface and help you to kind of get started so you won't be completely confused when you show up over here. Right now you can see your scene window and the neat thing is I can actually hit play at any time and just play the game right there uh, in this window, which is really cool. Uh, Yay! And uh, this game does not completely work right because I don't know what I'm doing, uh, but but I am able to get this little this little capsule dude moving around, and I was able to make this terrain in their terrain generator, which I thought was just cool as heck. Uh, I haven't textured it or anything, and uh, if I try to move my character around, he falls over because again I don't know what I'm doing, uh, but I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Uh, the neat thing here is that while you're actually playing the game, you could go and make changes to any variable. So like in Game Maker, if you were mess around with with speed or gravity or any of that kind of stuff look over here on the right you can see there's some different ideas about uh, the mass of the object the drag of the object you know the gravity or this code that I dropped onto this object this player controller code that we were just looking at over there in Visual Studio the move speed is a variable that I created over in the code I'm gonna jump back over see right here at the top I wrote a serialized field which means it will go and talk to Unity. So it opens up this value and throws it back over to Unity for me to go ahead and adjust it. And it starts out with a float variable called move speed, and it's 0.125f. That's what I mean about having to write your code correctly. You can't just write 0.125 and call it a day. You'd have to say, this is a float variable, which means it is a decimal point variable. It's called move speed, and it's 0125 F. I have to designate F because that means it's a float. All right. I know I already said it was a float. Why do I have to say 0.125F? I don't know. But if I do it wrong, I'll get errors like crazy and 
Visual Studio will just yell at me. Usually when I'm coding in Visual Studio, it, found, it feels like it's just going wrong, you know, the entire time. It's so obnoxious. You know, like I was showing you a second ago, I was trying to, to fill in stuff I didn't want it to. Um, but just, just for funsies, I'll show you another, another thing just to explain the way that this code is working. I'll just copy some of this other code and paste it in here real quick. Uh, we'll call it a, uh, an integer value because, again, you have to write it correctly. You have to write these, these variables. What kind of variable? It's an integer. It's a whole number. I'll call it ammo, and it's not a float vari variable anymore. We're going to call it um, ammo equals 10. This is like in GameMaker when you have the create. Here you go. Before you've done anything, just open up all these variables, okay? Down here on void update, you're going to recognize that as a step event, okay? But let's go ahead and I'll show you what this did. Uh, actually, I need to save it. And we'll jump back over to Unity. And it'll probably take a second for it to, uh, to catch up to the code that I just did. But if I'm clicking on this guy over there, you can see that I've now, down here in the bottom right, I've now got that variable called ammo. And uh, it doesn't do anything, it's just there. But even as I'm playing the game, this is what's really cool, and you don't get this in GameMaker, I can make a change to these variables right there just in practice, you know, just to try it out in the world. So, you know, I could change my, my move speed to, you know, 0.25 right now uh, and get back into the game window and just test out what that feels like. And I don't have to commit to that because when I stop, it goes back to what it was. So I can just play around and make changes right there on the spot. Very cool. I think you'd enjoy that a lot uh, coming from Game Maker over to Unity. That's one thing that I, I really think is neat. Uh, but anyway, I think I need that. Uh, another thing I want to explain real quick is this idea in, in code. This is what they're going to get into right away if you try to take any lessons. Something called methods. A method is, I think of it kind of like in Game Maker, like a script. Okay, Like right here, void update player controls. What's that? You see, void update is running it and all it says is player controls. Well, what I've done is I've made this whole method called player controls and it does what you'd think, you know, get W, get A, get S, get D, get space, and do all this stuff with these if-then statements. I can collapse that whole thing, this whole thing down, this whole method down, and when I run it, it's just called player controls and I don't have to think about, you know, how the sausage is made. All I do is like, as I'm running it, I want to run player controls and I want to check for the ground cool you know so later on if it's not working I can go in there and fiddle with those values but like if I collapse my code down and just worry about what it's actually doing and think of it in that more of a high level what I want to do you could run stuff like launch the main menu create a player uh, and if you've created your own method with those names you can just launch that whole chunk of code right here and not think about it too much but unlike in game maker where you've got really really object based code this code is kind of an independent object sitting out here by itself that I can attach to anything else. So if you notice, I click on the player controller script down here and I can read it all, in, but you know, it's like, okay, what's it doing? Well, I, when I attach it to my player object over here, player, you can see there's some of those variables that I opened up. And you notice ammo is gone because I removed ammo. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, that, that's a little bit different from Game Maker. So you're going to have to think about code as a separate asset, a separate object, okay? So while I'm on the subject, what is an asset and what is this layout? What are we looking at here? I've shown you a couple of things here and there, but I do want to take a second and actually show you directly and intentionally what we're looking at. Over here on the left, you might recognize this the same way in Game Maker, where you'll have all of the different sprites and, and objects and things, but that is not exactly what you're seeing here. So don't be misled by that. When you see hierarchy right here and you see this word game, that's just what I call this scene or this level. You'll think about this as a level. And we can see down here in the assets area under scene, there's one called game and another called sample. Anytime you start a new project in Unity, it'll just start something called sample scene and it'll throw in a camera and a light and you know go crazy. Um, so in my case, I want to go back up to the main assets level and show you that anything that I've got in this world is down here, okay, down at the bottom. I can move these all over the place so you can rearrange this. Most people take their hierarchy and drop it over to the right, over towards the inspector, which is a more detailed view. Like in Game Maker, if you were to click on any bit of code and you wanted to look at it, that's what you would get, all this stuff that's attached to it, okay. But uh, over here on the left, all you're seeing is what's in this scene or in this level. If I start a new level, I'll have to start from scratch and throw everything back in again or, or else make a copy of it and you know do a new version of it. That'd be cool too. Uh, but 
anything that you need to have in your game that includes sound, that includes code, that includes these objects, that includes materials, everything is called an asset. And it's down here in the bottom in this assets folder. And as it gets more and more complicated, you'll start adding more folders to it. The neat thing is that you can actually export stuff directly into the assets folder. So like if you're learning Blender and you're doing 3D objects like this tree is, you can export a new 3D object as an FBX file into the assets folder. When you go back over to Unity, it's like, cool, I updated, there it is. I mean, really, really neat, really, really neat. All right, one other thing I want to show you here is the idea of a prefab. That's something that is sort of like in Game Maker when you've got objects and then instances of objects, but it's a bit more robust than that. Anything that we're seeing over here on the left has got this little blue cube as a prefab, uh, and that means that we've taken all of the stuff that's associated with it and we've created one solid object called a prefab. If I go ahead and double click on it, I'm now looking at just that prefab, which means it's got whatever it's got. In this case, it's got a capsule and it's got a camera, and I already took this player controller code and threw it on there, so it's all associated with this one thing. You can imagine if you were to make an AI like some random robot dude, you can build it all the way you want to and then group it all up as a prefab and then have it to where you can use it again and again and again in your game. So that's a really neat idea. Right now we're just looking at, and you can see the blue cube again, we're just looking at the player prefab and see everything that I've got associated with it. In this case I've got a capsule object and I've got a capsule collider which is a hitbox for it. You know, think of it like your your masks on your sprite editors, but it's a three-dimensional object. I've got something called a rigid body, which turns it into a physics object. And these are all components, and I can add more, like this component here, that player controller script, which I just literally dragged onto it. And I can add more components, you know, and search for whatever it is I wanted, you know, like physics, and I can go and look for a different kind of collider or cloth or joints, or mesh colliders, all this cool stuff. Uh, that I don't fully understand. <laughs> and I can make, make more changes to the original object. So I could drop this player object into any scene later on. Uh, the neat thing is, I'll go back over here. The neat thing is, like I said, if you imagine that you had created uh, you know, some random mob, you could have copies of that guy again and again and again. And in fact, you can make changes to that individual instance of it. Like over here on the right side, we've got all these different variables like the transform his XYZ positions or this script that I added to him and all these different values I could make unique changes to just that copy without changing the original prefab of it so the prefab is like your original source and if you happen to like that change you can commit it back and say hey this is now the official prefab but let me show you that concept real real quick not hard we'll go to game object and I'm gonna create an empty and over here on the left I will just rename this guy with a right click and I'll call it, you know, demo. Then I'll add a game object. This is what I mean about really needing some external resources or say importing things from external resources or else learning 3D graphics yourself or, or 2D. You can use 2D. Um, I'm just in a 3D environment here. You could do a 2D game. But if you were say using Blender or anything like that, they'll really, really help you because then you can make your own assets and import them. In Unity, all you've got is some really basic stuff like cubes and spheres and capsules and stuff. So I could add this cube though, and they'll go up here and we'll just scale them up, okay? Scale them up, scale them up. And I'll use the inspector window over the right over here. We can say make changes here, so I'll call it, you know, 555. Five, five. If I were to grab this guy, this cube over here on the left, and just drag it up underneath demo, it's now a child of demo. Okay, so this whole thing is now called demo, and I can grab this object called demo, and I'm going to drag it down here to the bottom into the assets, and we get a new object called demo. It's a new prefab. Okay, I click on the prefab, and there we go. That thingamajigger I just made, this thing called demo, is now sitting there waiting for us to use it. And that is just so darn cool. This might be a room. It might be a piece of furniture, it might be a building, it might be an AI object, it might be a mob, you don't know, whatever. Whatever you want it to make, it could have sound effects, particle effects, all kinds of physics, it could have code uh, all attached to it, and it's all part of this prefab. I can come out here, and now that I've got this object called demo, let's say I wanted another one called demo, and another one called demo. So now we've got a bunch of them, and if I go back into this guy and say, ooh, snap, I actually wanted 
the cube object which is attached to demo I wanted him to be scaled you know like that go back and look at that we've updated we've got all the all the objects that we made are now updated because they're all instances of that object but unlike over in game maker it just it operates a little bit different because like I showed you you can attach the code to it the code works the same way I can make changes to the code that runs on demo again and again and again and it will update all of them because the code unlike being directly connected to the object is a separate object in its own right okay really really neat uh, anyway so that's just your general uh, overview here let me show you while we're here about how to just move around in this scene because it's a little bit confusing if you're not used to it um, hold down your right mouse button and you see it shows that little eye with a look because you can look around and it shows a little icon beside it that's a little tip it's WASD on your keyboard that's what that little Tetris looking icon is in the middle of the screen and you can move just like you would in a video game WASD movement cool uh, and Q and E are for rising up and down okay we can also just hold down on the middle mouse button and go around here we could also click on uh, get the move thing you can click on that camera oh that camera's part of the uh, he's chasing the player he's attached to the player as an object the camera could also be a free look camera you know in your scene just sitting there you could in fact make a character and all these objects who are not allowed to move into the depth like right here is the Z depth going in and out of the scene you could lock that guy to where he's not allowed to move and do a side-scrolling adventure in a 3d space but it only moves left and right you know and it can jump uh, stuff like that so like here you can see I've frozen the rotation of this guy so anyway if you're interested in getting into unity I would recommend first of all download the software because that's going to take about a million years uh, <laughs> download Visual Studio as well uh, and then set that as your default editor in your preferences or you can just use their mono develop if you want to but I don't think anybody does uh, but you're probably gonna want to get some formal training on this to make it any further but anyway that's the stuff that I think was throwing me off the other one that that threw me off big 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 time is the fact that most of the tutorials you're gonna do people are gonna act like you already know C sharp and what they're gonna do is say okay let's fire up unity and now we're gonna come down here we're gonna make a new script just like anything else uh, we're gonna create a C sharp script right there uh, you know and we're gonna call it something useful like uh, <laughs> demo because that's really useful and then we'll open that up and when you open this up it'll go over to Visual Studio and then they're gonna start talking about methods and voids and starts and different kind of variables and all kinds of stuff and they're gonna lose you entirely you will never see unity ever again for the rest of the tutorial because they're just gonna have you copying their code the whole time and they won't actually talk about unity they're actually talking about C sharp okay now this is a this is kind of a helper version of C sharp that you're going to wind up getting because it's got all of those unity built-in constants that I was talking about earlier uh, and it knows that it's it's in a unity kind of environment but it's not going to hold your hand as much as GML does GML is really forgiving and to tell you the truth like, like I said it does tend to make your code when it compiles like super super complicated because it let you get away with a lot of stuff you shouldn't have so then your games wind up being bigger and slower than they really need to be uh, just just because of the way that it works uh, the trade-off is that it's easier to learn GML and get into it like you gotta learn everything just right here in C sharp and you gotta get your syntax right and if you're working on a 3d game it's 3d space so things are a little bit more complicated also half the stuff they write sounds like it was written in Latin or by computer nerds I don't know uh, private void you know and then they won't explain to you what a void is get keys transform positions vector 3 you gotta write all that just right or it won't work okay <laughs> obviously like like over in game maker if you're writing things it's trying to help you out by giving a little tip at the bottom of the screen but usually usually in Visual Studio it's just yelling wrong you know the whole time like until you write a semicolon it's like it looks like oh my god your entire code is on fire nothing's gonna work oh no nope, never mind it's all fixed <laughs> it might it might throw out errors like that just because you didn't indent something and it's got like 12 errors then you add a parenthesis and it goes oh it's it's all fine <laughs> so it could be it could be a little intimidating to get in here so just expect to learn C sharp 
and expect to try to get more formal training if you can find that instead of just trying to wing it on your own. Uh, but aside from that, I think uh, it, it's still totally worth learning, and I, I still keep getting waylaid and hung up, and I'm trying. Uh, but it is really rewarding, and it is really cool. I'm starting to kind of get a glimmer of hope uh, that I'm going to be able to do it. Uh, but before I lost all hope or go out of my mind, I wanted to make this quick video to try to show you where to get started, at least to show you what to expect when you're getting into it. So I wish you the best of luck out there. Don't ask me for help. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> you guys be awesome and have a great day.